All right, so we're here at uh, WWDC 2014 with Aaron Illegas. What's up, Aaron? Oh, it's just great to be here. Yeah. So let's uh, go straight into this thing. Oh, first of all, I wanted to mention, in case you don't know, this is kind of sponsored by formerly Objective Cologne, but in the in the in the future, most probably Swift Conf. Okay. Um, I got it during the keynote. Uh, <laughs> SwiftConf.com. Um, Congratulations! Nice grab. Yeah, exactly. The conference about Swift. So let's let's speak about Swift. Uh, You've read the whole book I already? I have read the whole book on Swift already, and no I think kidding. it's a great step forward. I think it really tidied up the syntax. It's moved us a little bit away from the machine to give the compiler more room to optimize things. Um, it's going to be a really great step forward for the whole community. I think that Swift is really a work in progress. If mm -hmm. you look at the spec that they've written out so far, a lot of things are missing. So you don't see exception handling, for example. You don't see any support inside the language for concurrency. And I think that we'll probably see that. We'd love to see some stuff like Go, uh, Go routines, where you could very easily multi-thread and create channels to talk back and forth between the different threads. Um, so I, I don't think they're done yet, but everything I've seen so far, I'm really excited about. I thought you was going to say, I hope we will see something like Go to fail. I was like, <laughs> <laughs> no, I think there's always going to be a place for Go. I mean, Go uh, running on the server is a really great, great thing. So um, actually, uh, I met one of the Apple engineers doing a party here, and uh, I was very enthusiastic about uh, Swift, and he told me, you know what, it's not exactly quite ready, so uh, don't jump on it for production uh, right now. Uh, on the other hand, um, what's your recommendation to developers? They should start something with Swift uh, as soon as possible, right? Yeah, I think that it's that you should try something with Swift right away, but I don't think you should bet your house on it. I, I don't think that you should start a company and bet everything on Swift. Uh, I'm a big believer in not being the first person to use a technology because there usually are kinks. And if you think about you know, iCloud Sync or something like that, you didn't want to be the first one to go mm. and discover those bugs. Mm. You want to give Apple some time, to let them be discovered, and uh, let them be fixed. And one of the things that's, I think, most disturbing about some things that Apple does is that they tend to use us all as beta testers. Yeah. Um, when you think about uh, bindings, when you think about uh, a lot of little things, you can see that Apple gave the developer tool or the language to the community before they had really used it very much internally. And I worry that Swift is one of those cases that not very many sizable projects have been written in yeah, Swift yet. Yeah. So you just spoke about the iCloud. That's a very good segue to CloudKit. My rule of thumb for which technology you should not use from Apple is everything which has to do with networking. <laughs> what do you think about this new thing? I'm going to really have to test it. I mean, it, it, there is a real need there. And you can see a lot of people are running to fill that need. You talk about Dropbox and Parse. Everyone needs their apps to hold data on the cloud. Yeah. And if Apple can supply that in an elegant way to all platforms, I mean, that's something that, that Dropbox is really good about is it supports multiple platforms. Yeah. And if Apple can meet us there, I, I think it is a great option. Yeah. There's, it's wonderful that there's such com competition in that space of cloud computing. And you can see the prices dropping you can see the capabilities increasing all the time. And I think that's just going to continue. And I'm glad that Apple has thrown their hat into the ring. Yeah. You guys are teaching uh, Objective-C since like forever. Yeah. Um, so, and I, I, I did that as also. Um, so we all know how hard it is to teach Objective-C. This, this new kind of JavaScript-ish, Ruby-ish, Python-ish, Swift, it's probably going to make it way easier for many guys, right? I actually disagree. I think oh, Swift disagree? is going to be much harder to teach. Really? There are a lot of rules in Swift. Okay. Objective-C is a very free-form language. Okay. And, um, and a lot of the things that we have done as convention that the compiler let slip through is now going to be enforced okay. uh, by the Swift compiler. And so people are going to have to, as they write their first lines of code, are going to have to start living with these conventions that we have learned over the eons huh. uh, right away. Um, you know, I, I think it's going to be harder to learn. Interesting. Yeah, um, yeah uh, well, that's one thing Swift and iCloud, but we had about uh, 4,000 new APIs, and I don't know about for you, but I, I haven't seen in like five years WWDC um, so much uh, so much new stuff as, as this time. Really? Okay. Because I think I mean, it, I it know messes they the amount say 4,000, but a lot of it, I, I wonder how many... I wonder how much is really new and how much is just modernizing and m making the APIs more modular. When you talk about uh, real making changes that are not really 
uh, moving things forward, but just yeah. making it a little more consistent between iOS and yeah. OS 10. Yeah. Um, you're talking about significant changes in terms of API method count, but you're not actually talking about a major architectural mm -hmm. change. Mm -hmm. um, so what's what's your highlight for this year's WWDC? Because there is a bunch of stuff, again, like Xcode 6, for example. No, oh, I think Xcode 6 is just a wonderful step forward. Um, making things more interactive, and then Swift working with it. Uh, that's the thing about Swift is a lot of stuff will be inferred by the compiler. And as a result, when you look at the code, you don't really know what it means without the context. And Xcode is going to be tracking the context in which your code exists, so that you'll be able to mouse over a variable mm -hmm. and know what type it is, because yeah. you don't have to declare the that's type. That's actually about it. Uh, thank you for... Uh being with us, uh, spending that time. And it's a pleasure. Thank you. No, let's get let's get learn that Swift again and again. And it's kind of a refresh, right? It's right. That's no, it's, interesting it, part. it feels very familiar. It's yeah. a different syntax, but it's very familiar ideas. Okay. Cool. Well, well see you soon. Soon. Bye. Cheers.